Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red Game Media.com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up in the past 24 or so hours. And we're going to start things out with several pieces of AMD news, the first of which being an update to an exclusive I discussed around maybe a week or so ago now, concerning AMD having a couple of different variants of the X570 chipset. I reached out to a source to ask if they could clarify exactly what was going on with this. And sure enough, they got back to me a couple of days ago, but I've just been so busy with other things. And they basically clarified what is the uh, thinking behind the two different chipsets. So the first is going to be known as Premium, and the second is going to be Pro. But I can almost certainly tell you that you are going to be buying the premium variant of the chipset. And the reason is the pro variant is supposedly being aimed at OEMs. So you may ask, well, okay, aside from the name, which to be honest, if you were to ask 99% of people, what's a higher end skew between premium and pro, I imagine the majority of people would not be able to tell you what is actually technically better by just going by the name alone. Uh, indeed, it doesn't really give you any insight. Like if you hear like premium, you generally think it's a better product, but then pro is also, you know, sounds pretty good as well. Well, the actuality is that the pro variant supposedly lacks overclocking. I can only assume that this would only be in reference to the CPU. So I assume that you can still tweak memory timings and clock speeds for the RAM, but in terms of the actual CPU, you won't be able to manually adjust the clock frequencies of the CPU. I'm assuming things such as XFR work, however. So supposedly the Pro variant is once again going to be targeting OEMs, and the premium variant is going to be used by companies such as Asus, MSI, Gigabyte, in other words, board partners. So when you go to a shop, whether that's a physical store or online and you purchase a motherboard, almost certainly it will be a premium board. Maybe later on, and this is pure speculation on my part, this is not what the source has told me, pure speculation, it's possible we might see cost-reduced variants of the X570 in the future launch uh, with the Pro, but my guess is that the majority of enthusiasts probably won't want to do that because even if you're saving a couple of bucks and you don't necessarily have any inclination towards overclocking, let's face it, on the used market at the very least, the premium boards are certainly going to be fetching a higher premium. I'm sorry. Anyway, uh, moving on to some more news. There have been a couple of mysterious uh, processors that have been spotted on the FutureMark database and the well-known Twitter user Tim Apisak actually discovered these CPUs and they're really interesting for a couple of reasons. The first is the names and we'll get into those in just a second but also the specifications of these CPUs. In fact if you look at the core count versus the thread count it's identical. So we're looking at eight cores, eight threads, no SMT here. The Embedded socks have the code name of Kato, and we can see there are three variants, RX8125, RX8120, and finally, A99820. Highest end SKU appears to be, unsurprisingly, out of the RX is the 8125, and we could see that it's got a 2300 megahertz stock clock, but can turbo up to 2395 megahertz. The A9-9820 appears identical. Uh, we can also see that supposedly there is a difference in the driver name, although obviously we're not quite sure what the specifications yet of all of these different processes are in its entirety. Interesting thing is though, if you were to dig through the embedded uh, product listings on AMD's own official website, you can see that the RX Blah series of socks did indeed have uh, a start from excavator and steamroller and other such CPUs. As far as I'm aware anyway, these CPUs have not been formally announced, but it will be interesting to see exactly what their usage scenarios will be. Speaking of processors, though, that have been announced, we have Ryzen Pro and the Athlon Pro mobile processors. And as the name implies, they are for the 
uh, mobility sector. I'm not going to read out all the specifications because, well, there are just too many here. But AMD, unsurprisingly, are comparing themselves against Intel equivalents. According to the list of CPUs that AMD have provided, the top of the line CPU is the Ryzen 7 Pro 3700U with a turbo frequency of 4 GHz with a base frequency of 2.3 and runs at just 15 watts. It's 4 core, 8 thread and unsurprisingly utilizes the Radeon Vega graphics IP and also there are several other SKUs listed with the bottom of them being the Athlon Pro 300U which has just two cores, four threads because of SMT, still 15 watts but a turbo frequency of just 3.3 gigahertz and also uses just the uh, Vega free graphics solution. It was maybe a year, two years ago that Nvidia did uh, conclude via research that a GPU comprised of several GPU modules, in other words, think of them as multiple dies, would indeed have a higher theoretical along with real world performance compared to what you can actually create with a single monolithic die. And now they've created a prototype chip, which is certainly more than just a proof of concept. They've been working on what is known as RC18, which actually stands for Research Chip of 2018. It is currently rather small uh, in design, but can be scaled up. In fact, the chip is only comprised of 87 million transistors and it uses TSMC's 16NM process. But, as you can see from the slides, it is not just a single die, but is a multi-die configuration. There are 16 PEs, processing elements, which are used for deep learning. There's a CPU core for control and an on-chip global buffer for memory. Supposedly, the memory bandwidth here is around 100 gigabytes per second. Uh, that is per chiplet as well. And it is comprised of 36 dice total. It's unsurprising that NVIDIA are adopting this strategy. Once again, it's not the first time they've discussed this, and a couple of years ago they did publish that document. But in an age where Moore's Law is slowing down, companies are needing to take smarter approaches to increase performance. And actually, if you think of it this way, AMD have been very much on the chiplet bandwagon for some time. I'm sure most of you know that now. And even Intel, there are actually rumors with Intel's XE line of graphics that we'll actually see the GPU comprised of multiple GPU dies. Ashraf over at The Motley Fool had been told by his sources that the Intel XE graphics will be built between two to four GPU dies, and obviously that does depend upon uh, the performance targets of the GPU. So it'll be interesting to see how GPUs evolve over the next several years. And finally, we're going to be looking over the specifications of Intel's mobility ninth generation CPUs. Intel themselves actually did an oopsie and revealed some of the specifications, but since then, a user on Beidou has revealed the other specs of the CPUs that were missing, so they've kind of filled in the gaps. As always, it's possible the specs are wrong, so do go in with a pinch of salt. I won't read out all of the specs because there are too many different SKUs, so I'm just going to take a couple of the more interesting ones in my eyes anyway. The 9980HK is an 8-core 16-thread CPU, 2.4 GHz for the base clock, single core boost clock of 5 gigahertz and can boost to 4.2 gigahertz with what I can assume to be all cores, 16 megabytes level 3 cache and an iGPU boost clock of 1250 megahertz and it is an unlocked part 45 watt TDP. Uh, the lowest end SKU is the Core i5-9300H. Four cores, eight threads, 2.4 gigahertz for the base, 4.1 gigahertz for uh, single core, and four gigahertz for all cores, eight megabytes level free cache, uh, 1050 megahertz for the iGPU, unsurprisingly. It, along with all of the other SKUs, aside from the HK that I mentioned to begin with, have their multipliers locked and its TDP is 45 watts as well. From what has been revealed so far, these CPUs will launch in the next couple of months. They're scheduled for the second quarter of 2019. 
with all of that said hopefully you've enjoyed the video normal stuff if you did like share comment and subscribe and i'll see you soon take care bye for now